She that started so, about probably, well, actually, yeah. you know what about probably scary, started that. about the same oh, time. Yeah. Well, but I mean, oh, both of you started in yeah. real so estate anyway, about the same time. And then started so when he, uh, yeah. about the same time. Yeah. Uh, how crazy is that? That was how he was feeling called. I was like, hey, cool, yeah. how, well, how are we going to make money? Totally. <laughs> And I was like, what can I do? Oh, it's yeah. And so I got my license and um, I worked for a little while for a different when you say that and then in the words of my very wise husband. Way more family oriented. And they're privately owned, so it's it's a different vibe. So I to be honest, I I do not know that one. Oh, you're the wise one? No. He's the wise one. Uh, I know. My friend has been redrawn. Let's be clear: a wise ass, a wise acre, not a wise man. Those are different things. I will not show up with gifts for Jesus. Coordinated is entirely like you. Holy pets, but there's John. John is so Anna and Adam. They both are relatively new, just like you. He started about the same time, too. Snaps in the morning, take a look. Nope, not, not gonna work. Don't have that in my closet. Snap in my closet, snap in his closet. Let's go with slot three. That's how we do it. Still got squares. Right idea, right plan. Are you coming to the office tomorrow? No. Never on Thursdays, man. Never, she never comes on Thursdays. Oh, yeah, Michelle, how are you today? Olivia, come in the back. Johnny, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Are you going to be here or not going to be here? Is it green? John Hoffmeister over there? Holy catch, what are you doing up here? I don't even know what that is, but it sounds exciting. It's an island, but it's one and another, so it's like two and three. Uh, more than guys like Chris. Uh, Chris. Our broker's always solving problems. She said there's three bedrooms up here. Yeah, yeah. 
Good citizens in, uh, of the United States, we want to make sure we take some time to recognize that important time. Uh, my good friend Jamie handed out some bucket bills. I appreciate you reading those when he calls on you. Heather. Okay. I just read this on yep. the answer. You can just read it. We're testing your skills. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Hi everybody, I'm Heather, I'm from David Weekly Home, so I'll talk to you in just a minute about that, but um, what are you grateful for and why? Um, well, today I'm especially grateful for my friend Chris, who is now in cancer remission and has gone through like 12 months of treatment, and so she is now cancer free. Wow. Oh, oh, script, practice, and role play. Awesome. Yes. Lisa. Um, this one I fully agree with. Toddy and all her work on the awards night. Yeah. Hey, Toddy. She's right up there. They're smiling in the corner. This anonymous contributor is grateful for KWPR and always making me feel welcome. Nice. Hey. That is sweet. Um, I like that bucket better. I know. This is better. Bucket. Spirit Award. I heard I, we had Jolly in the house. Yeah, I'm here. He's doing last time Spirit Award. Mr. Oliver, let's hear it for him. Great. <laughs> All right. I would like to nominate, I don't think he's here yet, but Mr. Zach Bidelin for the Spirit Award. Oh, yeah. He displays team focus, a happy smile on at all times, and he's currently going way above and beyond by teaching and guiding our team with a new CRM. His incessant ability to teach, listen, learn, and then convey to others is paramount for everybody here in the business. Not a nine to fiver, taking calls outside of normal work hours, if there is such a thing. <laughs> and his past work experience with Zillow shares with all of us with his intricacies. So a true professional. Yeah. So thank you. 
That's outstanding. That's well put. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Well, some of you might have seen this. <laughs> so we said that there'd be a prize for the top responses to this picture. To lay the groundwork, we were getting ready to do his annual annual review, and we found him like this. <laughs> ready for full interrogation. <laughs> and we will say it was an amazing review. So, the third place, when there's an uh, award for the first place, the third place award was Chris Ooki. I swear, I don't know what happened to Kelly Arbus. <laughs> Steve is runner up. For that, he gets to wear a sport coat. <laughs> you mean if I read the roll report, RR for short, on a regular basis, I'll know what is happening in my marketplace and I can share all that information with my buyers and sellers? Well done, Steve. <laughs> And the winner who can't be here because he's on a road on the road to uh, profit, which is Rochester for for uh, a listing, is Mr. D. Um, he's a master at this stuff. Uh, this is Jason's face after you say to him, "Hey, you know what would be a great what would be great is if there was like some kind of website or dashboard or something where we could just find a lot of <laughs> in one place." <laughs> So for that, for that Dean, if you're listening, watching, you you are the winner of Shane Corn <laughs> <laughs> and a twenty-five dollar gift card for Starbucks. Now this is to have fun. This is to add to culture, and this is to encourage people to get more and more and more onto social media whether it's directly real, real estate related or not, so that your people are seeing you and that's more and more easy, free touches to your sphere. And because that culture is so amazing, we wind up attracting amazing people. Please welcome John and is it Elena? Aliana. Aliana, gosh, I'm going to say it wrong every time. And John and Aliana. <laughs> Congrats to our campers. We have Colin and Tina. Woo! All right, the winter soiree. Uh, we are putting the win into winter. And let's. There she is. Come on up and speak about it quick. So where are we at with it? All right. So we have. Um, this we is put Kelsey, it... by the way. Kelsey. <laughs> We put our numbers in on Monday, but we can always add more. So if you're not signed up, please sign up by end of today so we can give them the final counts. Um, if you have any questions or anything, I know we're still kind of questioning the where, wear whatever you want. Wear whatever you want. I mean, um, if so that's going to dictate top. you well, not I coming, I please I don't let it dictate like you not coming. Yes. Any color tie. <laughs> tie, no tie, bow tie, whatever. My tie, tie dye. Swiss tie. Um, we are also going to do, um, since we're doing things a little different this year, we're going to be sending out a survey as well. Um, I was joking, I'm like, well, maybe we should have it up at the bar so while you're drinking, you take the survey. But So just keep an eye out. Um, We'll be sending out a survey just to see what your thoughts were. Yes. Thank you. Plenty of cash for the cash bar. What do we have, brother? Or just CJ. <laughs> oh, how to workshop with our own Scotty. Yeah. Now, this is a big deal. Uh, let me tell you why. How to win the listing with NetSheet. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you're ball state expert, right? Isn't that what uh, uh, 
James Shaw. James Shaw, yeah, Ball yeah. State. Well, to me, no, as a realtor, it was once I figured out that what other agents didn't like doing was if I figured out how to like doing it and get good at it, I would win the listing. One of them is when agent advocacy, that's kind of like here, right? But if I'm presenting it well and the other agents are interviewing or not, I get the opportunity. Other people too, they look at that net list, net sheet and go, okay, this is that, and I hope they don't ask about this and this is, right? But those are all opportunities to share with them what's going to benefit them and to show off what you know. And then when they meet with another, list, uh, another listing agent, you've gone through it. They don't, you look way better. You know why? Because you are. And Scotty's the expert for that. So please show up on February the 8th. Path to Wealth. This is coming up here on February 14th. So show yourself some love by growing your wealth. Now, I've been at a couple other companies. One of the things that they never asked me about was how am I growing my wealth? Okay. They want to know how many more listings am I getting? How many more closings? Whatever. They never stopped and go, hey, you know what? Your life will be better if we help you grow your wealth. And so please come to it. And we'll, we'll address it again soon. And you don't see here, she's going to speak. Amanda Dahl herself. <laughs> we'll have to check for Amanda in my Yeah. We'll come back to that, but for now, we have a birthday girl in the house. Her oh. birthday is actually tomorrow, but she's not here, so we're celebrating today. So please sing with me. Oh, thank Happy, you. Birthday Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Melissa. Happy birthday to you. I that when I was teaching and was celebrating like hundreds of birthdays. We would sing it. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will be dividing it into 40 parts. <laughs> Melissa. Oh, perfect. Oh, what a good segue. You are in luck. I am not going to make you sing or dance today, but I'm going to ask you all to give someone a high five next to you. And remind me how many times you take the card. How many times a year do you pay a car? We covered that last time, and that's five times a year. It seems like a lot, just as a reminder. All right, well, I have been in this role for two years now, but before I had this job, the fabulous Steve Rawl had this job, and one of the great things that he does for the industry and for our market center is he serves on a committee where he will hear ethics hearings. And as you can imagine, he learns a lot from that and he shares a lot of wealth from that. And one of the tips that he gave me last week that he and I both thought was very much worth passing on is a reminder to you that as you go to schedule your showings, there is an option in here where you can put the buyer's name. It's optional, so a lot of us rush through that. We just do it really quickly. These are my showings I'm doing today. These are the ones I'm doing this week. If you slow down and take the time to enter in your buyer's names, and every now and then go through and delete the ones that you're not using anymore, should you ever come into a situation where someone challenges you and says, tell me precisely which houses did you show to this buyer and exactly when, you can very easily compile that data by going here. If you haven't put in their names, you're going to frustrate yourself very much by trying to collect that information. So thank you, Steve, for the tip. In the that, sidebar. Which, where are we entering that? Which, what are you using there? Showing time. Showing time. Showing time. Showing time. Yeah. Is that accessible to the other company? I don't think no. so. No. And you can enter as little information as you want and ask I it for like a name or you know, name, phone number, email address. I always just put a name in. They don't I don't know. <clears throat> I don't want to compromise any more information just in case. But I just I put initials. Oh, that's a good idea too. Steve. <laughs> the arbitration that I set it on last Friday was over a sixteen thousand dollar commission. And basically you're trying to prove procuring cause an uninterrupted series of events that leads to purchase agreement. And it wouldn't have made any difference, but one of the agents 
had six or seven showings that they could prove, and the other agent only had two, even though he said he showed them quite a few other homes, but he didn't use that feature right there. So it's a feature that's available to us. We want to make sure that you're using it to the best of its ability. Um, next one. <coughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Welcome right back. Yeah, perfect. We'll put a pause. Have Amanda come on and chat with us. Hello. Hello. How are you? I don't know if you can see me. I'm trying to figure out what my phone's doing. Hold on. There we go. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome to QWPR. Thank you. So great to be with you all. I actually just landed in San Antonio, Texas, where it is raining and ice. So glad to be with you all. Absolutely. Well, first of all, yeah, be safe. And tell us a little bit what we can expect here coming up on the 14th. Yeah, so I'm so excited to be with you all. Listen, I can't think of a better place for y'all to be than with me on Valentine's Day so that you can fall in love with building your wealth. So we're going to talk for four and a half hours. We're going to do a workshop, and I want to be very clear about this. Workshops are different than training. So this is like, come, bring your laptop. I'm sure you all have been getting my emails about the homework. So we're going to talk all things Robert Kiyosaki cash flow quadrant, help you understand your mindset around money and why people stay in one quadrant or the other. We're also going to talk about things that keep people from being very wealthy. We've taken some content from Mark King that he so graciously shared with us around like six key perspectives to building wealth. And we literally break it down step by step. I'm going to start with talking to you all about our entities and whether they're set up properly or not. And that's okay. Um, also talk to you about cash flow into your business and then what you can start doing with the excess cash flow that you have what i do want you all to hear though is it doesn't matter what level you're at if you're someone who's been investing for a while has maybe a nice portfolio or if this is the first time you're hearing the word wealth and you are intrigued this workshop is for everyone i tell my more advanced individuals that this is a great way for you to cal um like recalibrate what you've been doing make sure that we're actually doing the basics and if you're not someone who's been doing this before then you're going to be able to walk away by the end of the day with information to go implement whether it be the budgeting or it be setting up your entity you're going to have a scorecard to take with you it's going to be really really great so do you all have any questions or anything you wanted me to dive into specifically Um, not offhand, it looks like, uh, We're all just know, I, like the, I like the words <laughs> excess cash flow. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and well, it's very, it's very important to me that you all understand that because what I have identified in this journey, uh, on my wealth journey personally and teaching it to our KW agents is that people get really weird. Like I can always tell when the energy shifts in the room, arms crossed, people sit back because they hear things and listen, we've been conditioned to think about money, to approach finances in a way from generations before us. And we were conditioned as children and in school and the lack of financial education has just caused that to kind of be like this snowball effect or domino effect in a lot of people's lives. So what I would ask is that you come with an open mind and you understand that we absolutely leave judgment and fear and shame at the door. And we're just going to get really real about what's happening in our world. And more importantly, like how we can get past that. What I can tell you is the people that are playing in this arena at a really high level, they have no problem sharing with you what they've done wrong, the areas they spent their money in that wasn't very smart. Like you just get really comfortable talking about money. And so I just want to kind of pull back the black curtain for you all and break it down so that you completely understand why we think the way that we think and how we shift that thinking and then have practical and tactical things for you all to take forward. Any questions? Well, at minimum, your energy is worth the price of admission. You <laughs> talk. I'm like, just wait. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just wait. 
lucky. Y'all just wait. Energy's great, like I said, and I love people who have great energy as well. So we will be together. I'm so excited to share my Valentine's Day with y'all. So please register for the class and make sure that you are getting the emails for the homework. You got a book to read and you got some things to document on a spreadsheet. So make sure y'all have gotten that and that you've started the process, okay? That's wonderful. Thank you for your time and drive safely and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. All right, I'll see y'all next month. Amanda, be blessed. It is in here. We got Scotty's workshop here to, to sign up for and GW Wealth right here. I was just going to add to that. It is almost sold out and we don't have any problem shifting it over to the hotel across the street. Um, so if you have um, guests from other companies that you want to come, get them signed up. I think we're, Kelsey, we're, 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 we're at a max of 60 for this room. And last I checked, there was 50 some already signed up. So the sooner the better, if you're planning to attend, if you can get signed up so that we have an idea of like, are we for sure shifting over to uh, the hotel? Um, that would be helpful. So, you know, it takes three seconds, just to scan it and well, maybe 10, but um, scan it and get signed up if you're not already for today so we can know what we're doing for that day. Awesome. Yeah, we want a lot of excess cash flow for you all. And one of the things she said about, talked about energy, my mentor, Kirby Puckett, would always say energy and attitude are free and they don't cost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of great uh, energy and attitude, let's bring her back up. All right, all right. I'll, I'll be really quick for the rest thank of you. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, Not you. a problem. If I'm anything, girl? I'm definitely flexible. So I had posted this on, um, I had posted this on the Facebook group. You can go on to the next one. And um, I am very excited personally, and I was curious if any of the rest of you who have done research on this um, next generation of showing time that's coming out. Has anyone gone to the website or done any research? It looks like they have some really wonderful new additional features. And you can also, um, you can join a, 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 like a test group to, to trial it and test it. And it sounds like they're going to be rolling it out just within a few, a few months. So just something exciting on the horizon. And then last but not least, um, something that's really important for you guys to keep in mind over the next three weeks, those of you who are using Remind, which Jason, Oliver, and Lisa, I know are two people here at the Market Center who use it religiously. It was a free feature that North Star MLS offered us, and they are not going to be offering it for free anymore. And so you'll have to pay a monthly fee, and it is a significant expense to do that. So Jason and Lisa have been kind of brainstorming with me on it a bit, and our tip for you today is if there's data that you want to pull from that, do it now before the 19th so you can utilize still as much address information as you possibly can. Jason, anything that you'd want to add to that? No, it's it's a great idea. You can literally pick your neighborhood or your farm, download the mailing addresses, print them onto regular copy paper. So in the future, you can just copy it onto the, the Avery stickers for labeling. So you may not have access in the future, but at least get it done now for free. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. All right. Yeah. Melissa, can you do you know I know like the pricing or whatnot, but can you do I know yeah. there's monthly payment, like a monthly payment option. It's $200 like, per right, month. 200 and it's like 2000 per year or whatnot. But are you able to do like months at it? Like if you just want to get it for a month or are you committing to the 12 months if you're doing the monthly? Ooh, I well, don't know the answer to that. Lisa, in, in the research that you've done on it, can you pay an individual month or do you have to commit to it for that full year? Um, I, well, I have yet to have a phone number that we can talk to sales or anybody. And so I had to create a technical support ticket to yes. try to get someone to call me. Yes. And so I'm waiting today. Okay, I'm I'll sorry. Post more information on the Facebook page yeah. as a-, a do you, you used to be able to pay for it monthly, the pro. Okay. So I got it for a while. Okay. Um, my main point today is if you are a user, um, and thank you for Jessica for recommending that I bring this up, if you are a user, use it to its fullest ability until February 19th. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about that? Oh, um, my pleasure. Um, I thought this was going to be at a different time. So uh, some of you in the past have um, joined fellow realtors, statewide realtors, at a special event that they do at the state capitol every year. It's to increase awareness. It's to give you face-to-face -face time to be um, with your elected political um, representatives. 
And I have attended in the past. I know that there's other agents here in the office who've also attended in the past, but this year we're trying to make it a big deal. And I'd really like to have um, a good attendance from Keller Williams Preferred Realty. I'd like to have a nice presence there. So it is on February 13th. The actual program is at the hotel, which is downtown St. Paul. It's not at the Capitol, it's at the Intercontinental. And the actual program goes from 9.30 until 12.30. There's a possibility that there will be one hour of CE. It's pending. There will be a representative from the National Association of Realtors talking about economic trends and housing forecasts. People are typically very interested in this. It's not a virtual event. It is only in person. And then as a bonus to us, um, we have our very own Senator Duckworth, who has agreed to meet with us from 9 until 9.30. It would be a donation to his campaign if we had coffee and rolls and a special room. So we are not doing that. We're keeping it very simple. It's just going to be in the ballroom, but we'll have a corner of the ballroom that we'll have set aside ahead of time so all of you will know where to come. But if you would please come and show your support, especially for those private property rights that we fight for for our consumers, that would be great. That's Monday, right? It is a Monday. Yeah. Anything else on that? I think no, yeah. no for the sure. moment. Okay, Same thank you. There. Good, thing you gave, good thing you gave me a cupcake to make it all worth it. <laughs> all right, our good friends Brian and Drake. <laughs> I remember that being part of it. <laughs> I don't know how I got in there. It must have been PBS watching. <laughs> so uh, I've talked a lot in the past and I'll talk in the future about down payment assistance. Uh, but today I wanted to touch on a little a different aspect that we haven't talked about. You know, it just helps us get our buyers into a house. It's the quicker we get them into the first time, the quicker you're going to get them in the next time. Uh, and so, it's, especially for younger people and first-time home buyers, it's not realistic for them to be saving a thousand bucks a month. Probably more realistic is a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks a month. How long is it going to take to get to three percent down or five percent down by doing that? Down payment assistance is going to, let's say, bypass saving up all that money and getting in, get them into a house quick. Uh, let's see. You know, yes. I think I beat somebody else. So, <laughs> yes. no, I'm going to use my digital pointer right now. Uh, these are other kinds of down payment assistance programs that are out there. And I'm just going to kind of touch a, a lot of information, but cities have their own down payment assistance. Counties have their own down payment assistance. And it varies from 2,500 to 60 grand, depending. You have to be a first time home buyer. Some you don't, others you do. There's a couple programs if you're a first time generation in your family, yeah, that's the only way you qualify. Uh, income limits, 80% of the uh, average median income. But you, some can go up to 120, some are only 60%. It's all over the board, and I don't expect you to know it, but we do know it, and it just additional options, again, to get your buyers into the coast. Are the majority of those grants or are they loans that you uh, pay back when you sell? So, both. Okay. Yep, some are both. Uh, like Minnesota Housing, which is an awesome program and it's actually probably better than several, many of yep. these. Uh, Can be. That's a, like, a silent second mortgage that goes on the house. And uh, several of these are the same. They go on the house. Uh, and when you sell, you pay it back. But some are grants and you don't pay it back. So it just depends. Okay. Uh, Drake's going to talk about, well, how do you get this message out to your customers? And so we've got a bunch of graphics that uh, we can co-brand your information on, as well as Brian's. And you know we're happy to co-brand all of these for you. Just uh, reach out to Brian or I. Uh, we have a big portfolio of all kinds of different graphics. Um, but these ones are great because you know it's it's really gonna you know get your phone ringing if you can uh, you know if people see that you have local grants or you know special access to different programs um, then you know that's that's kind of the key there and we want to make sure that you're posting these things so that way like Brian said you're getting that message out to your buyers and then on top of that that graphic previously that you guys saw 
Um, many of you probably won't remember any of those numbers or, or cities. And so I'm happy to post that in the Facebook group so that you guys can you know, download it or print it out or whatever you want to do with it um, so that you can keep a copy for yourself. Um, but uh, along with these, like I said, we have a big portfolio of all kinds of different graphics. I have agents meeting with me, you know, every other week and, you know, just kind of seeing what we have. And uh, we're happy to, you know, uh, co-brand as many as you'd like and, and we send them straight to your email so you don't have to do too much work. Um, so um, other than that, I think uh, covered all of our bases. So if anybody had any questions about anything. I just want to tag on to that a little bit, especially with the Minnesota first time home buyers, because I have some clients that bought a home, not with the first time home buyer program, but a um, bought a home that needed some work with windows and, and updates and things like that. And Minnesota housing has fix up programs too, at um, with depending on, I don't know if they were low or no income, um, they didn't have to pay it until they go back and sell their home down the road and that kind of thing too. So. You know, there's some good opportunities for, especially the last couple of years when people have gotten into homes that maybe they overpaid for, didn't do inspections, have issues that they need to address. It's a it's a perfect program. Plus, if you, you save up, oh, I, I saved up my three percent down. All right, I want to buy a house. Well, we're right back into the market where sellers aren't going to help you out of the fall. So you're going to have to come up with that also above and beyond just the down payment on the program. So. Uh, the down payment assistance, they call it down payment, but it can, most of them will go towards money that's needed, not just down payment. Yes. I read something yesterday and I, I don't, I was hesitant to even bring it up because I, I don't know a ton about it, but something to do with loan level pricing, adjusting, going up May 1st. And so those buyers that we have, we should get them locked and loaded and signed otherwise that can affect their rate come may one yes so no, what that is not really out there yet, right but... i'm going to say maybe a year ago came out and said you know second homes just going to get very expensive because fannie and freddie they're packing on cost yep and so that's a loan level price adjustment and so the those they're affecting new adjustments, but over half are positive, right. better than what we were previously. But it's not just for second homes. No, no, so okay. correct. Okay. But uh, let's say uh, lower FICO scores. Right. You get hammered. Yeah. All right, so higher is better. I don't care what your score is, higher is yeah. better. But and now you don't quite get as hammered on a lower score as you used to. Got it. But in, in some cases, it does get worse. But in the, I've looked at the graphs, Majority actually is a positive, kind of offsetting some of the things that we had previously. So it's actually, I mean, go ahead and let's get the buyers in, but it's not a necessarily a negative. Okay, very good. I know Colin was planning to bring it up on the conversation call tomorrow, just so that you know those of you that are starting to hear and see it, we can handle those objections with our clients. Right. And I can uh, maybe the next team meeting I can throw some up. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, let's welcome <laughs> Heather Ostley. Ostley, yep, you got it. Hi, everybody. My name is Heather Ostley, and I am a senior sales consultant at David Weekly Homes. Um, I've been selling new construction for about the past eight and a half years, and that was prompted primarily by my husband finishing about a 20 year career at General Mills and going into ministry. So he's a pastor now and we have four girls. They, we live in Minnetonka. Um, I'm going to have four teenagers as of February 16th. Uh, <laughs> four teenagers. <laughs> Sorry, you can feel for me on that one. Um, so I am here to talk to you today a little bit about where is David Weekly Homes building in the South Metro. And if you're not familiar with David Weekly, David Weekly is the largest privately held national builder. So started in Texas 47 years ago and has kind of expanded throughout the country. We've been in the Minneapolis market for seven years. And currently right now we have um, uh, one location that's just um, right here in Burnsville. And that's gonna be our Twin Lakes community. And then I'll talk about this one in a second, but we can go to the next slide. So the reserve at Twin Lakes is in Burnsville, um, just south of where you all are, or actually, 
south, south, a little bit south and just down 35 a little bit more. Um, so townhomes, three bedrooms plus a loft and 2.5 bathrooms. This is kind of the square footage that we're looking at. And we're in like the high 300s to mid 400 range there. Um, we're about halfway sold out in that community. But if you have buyers that are interested in townhomes, this is a great, it's like a little pocket neighborhood. So it's kind of tucked away. Um, only 52 homes in the community. So it's pretty small and it's got we can go to the next slide because I think I'm going to show it. So it's got some really nice green spaces. So like a pond out here. And then now where we're building over on the um, east side of the community, that backs up to ponds as well. There's a dog park and an outdoor fire pit. We can go one more. And then this is um, kind of what the interior finishes look like. So this is actually photos from our model home. Um, David Weekly is known for doing tons and tons of windows, so we try to maximize our window space, which is really nice, especially in townhomes, because sometimes I feel like they can feel dark. Um, but lots of nice spaces, and uh, I think the finishes are kind of speak for themselves. So that's really nice. Go to the next one. Okay, and then I'm super excited to tell you about this. So um, I am going to be opening our brand new community in Rosemount. It's called Amber Fields, and if you are, I'm assuming probably have worked in the South Metro a lot. So if you're familiar with Rosemount, over by Hennepin Technical College, there's a big parcel of land that was the University of Minnesota Extension land. So it's called Umore, and that parcel of land has now been purchased and developed. And so um, the first phase is going to have 800, 800 homes, and so it's going to be a variety of builders. Um, David Weekly is going to be doing single family two-story homes, but they will um, be association maintained. So I think I talk about, we can go to the next slide. So we're gonna do 123 single family homes in the first phase. We're gonna have 38 and 44 foot home sites. The, there'll be three to five bedrooms, uh, two and a half to three and a half bathrooms. And these will be two car garages with optional basements. So they'll be slab on grade, or you can opt to do a basement which is kind of a nice, a nice way to, if you need a lower price point to get in at a lower price point. Um, and like I said, association maintained. And here's just an example of like one of the floor plans of that'll look like. And this is what the whole parcel looks like the first phase. So um, the yellow highlighted area is where David Weekly will be building. It's on the south side of 42, um, just past highway three. Here's your schools. We're gonna have a variety of quick move-in homes and dirt builds available. One of the things that I think is important to know about David Weekly, if you guys do a lot of new construction, um, is we do have a full design experience. So our design center is located in Minnetonka, and if you're dirt building with us, even if you're catching a home that's an early stage quick move-in home, you can go to our design center and choose all your interior finishes. We also will consider custom requests. So if you Off have site. something, yeah. Custom request offsite? No, oh. custom request for the home that you're building. So, like, I have okay. people that come in and they're like, I don't really need three bedrooms. I want to make one bedroom a huge laundry room. Okay, like, we can consider doing that for you, where a lot of the builders will just say, no, can't do it. So, I think that's a nice thing to know about David Weekly. And then I think we'll go to the next one. This is what I am like super excited for about this community. It's a really well planned master community. So, there's a hundred acres of park and rec land. There's going to be seven community parks, pickle court, pickleball courts, dog park, five miles of trails. They're doing some super cool things. Like um, there's going to be like a nature play area where like, instead of having big play equipment, it's like boulders and things for kids to climb on and all kinds of stuff. There's going to be an art node that's going to have this big sundial and some other cool things. And then just tons of really, elaborate landscaping so it's going to be a pretty beautiful community and this is eventually what the whole thing will look like but they're kind of starting with that top chunk so um yeah so that that's what that is and then i have one more quick thing to talk about um you want to just hit through like punch through <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you. So, um, so David Weekly has a new seller circle that we rolled out at the beginning of 2023. So um, when you partner with David Weekly, you're going to have 2.7 total purchase price on the first sale of the year, then it goes up to 3% and then 3.5 for subsequent three and up sales. 
So we just want to reward you. We thank you for partnering with us. And another thing, sorry, I'll ask get to your question just one second. Um, you don't have to be with your client the first time that you walk into David Weekly. Like we honor all your relationships. So if like a client pops in and they want information and then you know you get involved down the road, like we're gonna absolutely honor that. It's not gonna so just know that I answer your question. The Burnsville development, yes. are there any main level master suites? There are not in that community, okay. no. So that's going to be all upper level bedrooms. Okay. Yeah. Good question. That's what I was going to ask you. You have any one level living? So we, we do one level living, but we don't currently in the South Metro. And what we're doing in Rosemount is not, not at least what I know that we have planned is going to have um, only upper level bedrooms. Yeah. Um, the Any, way anywhere else in the Twin Cities? Yeah, yeah. so we do, um, right now, our community in Dayton, which is on the south side of Maple, like yep. it's on, <laughs> close to Maple Grove, um, we have tons of Rambler plans in that community and also some two stories that have main level better. Okay. South houses with association? Um, so half family? of that community is association maintained, but okay. it is single family living. So you said uh, basement optional, did you mean it's a slab or did you mean it's unfinished or both? So it could be either. Okay. So the base prices in that community will be slab on grade. Then you could opt to do a basement that would be unfinished or you could opt to do the basement and finish it at the same time. Okay. Yeah, so kind of all three options. Next question, because I haven't been watching Rosemont closely. Is yeah. there very much retail planned for that area? Yeah. So um, on the north side of County Road 42, just across from the neighborhood, they're putting in a brand new Lifetime Fitness, which is going to be really cool. And then within the community, I don't know if you want to pop back to that slide. I'll try to show you on the map. Uh, OK, that, yeah, that map's fine. Um, up here, there's going to be some retail right here. Um, I'm guessing that's going to be like maybe like a nail salon, like Jimmy John's, that kind of stuff um, in there. But beyond that, like for bigger big box retail, I'm not sure if they're planning like a target for out there. Not sure what they can do that. So, yes. Any other questions? I want to. Yes, sir. That's all that cool stuff. Oh, yeah. OK, so I put together some fun swag for you. So these coffee mugs are filled with Valentine's chocolates. And then these, if you um, are need, if needed a new tape measure, there's a tape measure in here with a little Valentine's chocolate. And then um, this is our February promotion for all of our communities. So you can take one of those. And then also a flyer on the seller circle. So you have that as well. So grab that on your way out, and then um, I think that Grace is going to have lunch ready for you in your mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Awesome. I appreciate it. Before we get into this, one thing, when I mentioned to Dean that he was getting an award today, he assumed he was getting a Tony for his Staying Alive video. <laughs> Those who saw his okay. Staying Alive video, it was worthy. <laughs> Top profit share members, let's give them a round of applause. Steve and Kate and Carly, Colin, Amber, David, <laughs> Jack, Aaron, Janie, and Steve. As you can see, these folks have their ducks in a row. <laughs> All right, I just got a profit share check posted in my bank account again. How annoying! Said no Keller Williams agent. <laughs> so this is uh we wanted to get into some of the profit share uh to start the year uh, it's a special opportunity for me and the staff to to pour into your futures uh, go ahead real quick so one of the things that i think people get confused about is what's revenue share versus profit share <coughs> those of you who attended aaron kaufman's event he touched on that a very tennis company originally that was a dependent company. We depended on brand old school, like the Dino, like, like Colwell, that, that kind of company. And then an independent company came along and that took a bunch of his people. So he's like, oh no, what am I going to do? So he involved the agents. And at first he started with revenue share. And revenue share is you're making money on people in your downline. And as long as they're selling, you're making that money now. And that's 
great, but Gary started to realize that he'll run out of other people's money at some point. Um, I'm hoping that some of the other companies that do the revenue share don't get into that situation. But if they do, maybe they'll like profit share. Because first thing when you guys talk profit share, we talk profit share with you, you're probably thinking, at least I would have been, well, I don't want to recruit because it's like, this is my bandwidth right now. I need to focus on real estate. However, if I focus on recruiting, you know, it, that's a big chunk of time that might be difficult for you. Because as you can see, the company right now that's well known for doing revenue share, these are the startups, the last, excuse me, people have moved over to the company in the last 365 days. This is their business and how much they've gone backwards in their business. Some of these people really kick butt. And why is that? And I'm not trying to, you know, put anybody on, you know, shame them or anything. It's just once you get, so for example, if, if you invite someone to meet me, or, <laughs> and they still join, um, <laughs> that person's in your downline. Well, if that person brings people in and they're producing and the pro and the profits, the profits are great. You're gonna earn the profits from all those folks. Well, here, once you get on board, you get excited to recruit, but you got to get five people before you start unlocking the other tiers. And then once you get there, you need to unlock more. So it's a constant recruiting situation. Hence, we lose time on our business. And here, we're coming up with systems to where you won't lose time just by saying, hey, you know what? Uh, what's your biggest struggle right now? Okay, you can meet with Jamie. Olivia, uh, and they'll help you with, with your struggle right now. They have some great ideas. They help us. It's that easy? It's not. It's that simple. It's not easy. I will say that. Anything to share about this? You know, it, the graph just, if, if you're looking at it, that black line in the center is 0%, right? So I, as I moved into this new business, how did my business change? And in moving to this company in the year following, everybody to the left, and their business go down. Everybody to the right and their business go up. And here's what we really want to talk about because we're talking about profit share. We don't want this to be you. And I know the first time I heard profit share, I thought I got to go recruit. I'm a salesperson. I sell homes. We don't want this to be you. We don't want to talk about profit share in a way that makes you think I'm going to lose business because it's real. It happens. We're not immune to that. We're smart. We're smart enough to look at the graph and go, nobody here would want to do that if it happened to their business that way. So what do we do? What does that look like? How do we move forward with that plan? And let's start out with why. Why would we do some profit share, James? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Um, we'll start here. Well, build, building wealth, as we've already talked about, is number one, Google search done by real estate agents. <laughs> That's legit. We even heard that again last week. The biggest regret realtors have a year later. What would I wish I would have done more of a year a year ago? Call her Spearmore and not focusing on profit share. The difference too that's really important to point out is in a revenue share model, you need to keep your license. And you can't pass it on to Johnny and Sally when something should happen to you. Profit share, it be generational. And that's one of the things that excited me about coming here was I get to play a role in you guys experiencing freedom. And that's power. So we talk about what profit share is um, and what it's a share of the profit of the brokerage. Um, how do we make money as a brokerage? I'm going to be flat out honest with you in the simplest way that I can, because again, we want this to stay simple and relative. We have more agents. That's how we get more profitable. Yes, we have a responsibility to do a fantastic job managing expenses. And for those of you who look at the profit share checks and check out the breakdowns on a regular basis, you will find that agents who work at this market center get you more profit share value because we manage our expenses phenomenally well. I don't mean well, I mean phenomenally well. Far superior to the other brokerages in the area 
and among the best in the country. So bring an agent here, it generates profit. That profit that is shared with you based on the number of people who name you as their sponsor. So all they have to do is name you as their sponsor. You don't have to educate them. You don't have to train them. You don't have to teach them. You don't have to cajole them into doing their job. They do their job. And for a revenue share company, and again, contrasting into a revenue share company, you kind of are responsible for getting them up to speed. You kind of are responsible for teaching them the business. If you want to do that, jump right in. We've got so many opportunities for you to help. We'd love to have you help out as much as you can. And they don't even have to be your people because if they sell a home at this brokerage, anybody that contributes to the profit of the brokerage, which goes to you, not the individual's revenue. So we have a vested interest in making everyone successful. Um, each layer in your profit share tree has a di different payout. If you're interested in that, my good friend is gonna be having a class and we'll talk about that later, but we'll be having a class where we go into that in a little bit more depth, but today is not the day for talking about the fine details of the sixth level of your profit share tree. But the goal is to be both D, as in the number of agents, and Y, the number of agents across, right? So if I have a friend who names me and they name my friend, I have gone D. If I have two agents who name me, I have gone Y, right? The more agents that name me, Y, the more agents that name them, I start to go deep and I grow roots. And that's where the real benefit comes in. Jason, last month, I mean, you got to be in this company a long time to get this year. I mean, who was number one last month? Corey Pape. How long has he been there? A year and a half? Maybe? It's a long time. He's <laughs> Yeah. So, and I mean, Corey has made that a focus of his business. He's going out and finding other agents, doing sorts of things, doing that kind of thing. So that's what we talk about, how to develop that plan. Well, in many ways, well, the first thing you can do is when you're in the community, be excited about where you're at. Really stay, take the time to be grateful and thankful for what is here. Um, it's an incredible culture. For those of you who haven't been outside this culture, you might not know different. And I understand that. I've been in other cultures that I thought were amazing. Uh, and if you're not excited to be here, let's play a role in, or have you play a role in helping us make it more exciting. What can we do? Now, this is a deed. This is a brokerage built for agents by agents. So love all your feedback. Case for Jess, well, how in the heck does that help me? Oh, well, the thing is super cool about Case for is like in September, I had 24 people in this office refer me somebody who wanted to get their real estate license. At this point, uh, that is free to them. It's usually $729. And um, what I'm doing is calling my sphere and saying, hey, do you know anybody who wants to change uh, their career, a career change? And uh, we have a scholarship. And last week I have two past clients who are getting their license, and yesterday I had two more. So normally, Jess, you ask that question, do you know anybody who wants to buy or sell real estate, right? Yeah. And now you say, do you know anybody who wants to buy or sell real estate? And they say, yes. And then you say, and do you know anybody who wants to look for a new career? Just another question, just one simple, one question. easy question. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Co-op agent surveys, you guys do such a great job of filling that out. Sure, he gets it to Jess and I, and we contact them and uh, send them a note as well, and then we'll follow up. Because the key is in the follow-up for everybody, correct? And having training class coming up, of course, one on profit share, but any class coming up, anything coming up, just. Think of the top three people that you know and just send them a text. What the heck, right? Can't hurt. Jimmy, can agents who don't belong to Keller Williams Preferred Realty attend this meeting? Absolutely. So I can invite someone to this meeting. You can. That would be a good idea. And many of you have. And that's been a great way for us to contact, talk, and speak with them. It's just through this meeting and seeing an opportunity. What does that look like? How does that help me? How can I be a part of this community? Because I, I like to think we do a good job, and if we don't, I'd like to know how I can make it better, because that's that's all I care about, is making this better for you. Well, we spoke about it before. I came from, a, when I was an agent, I was at a brokerage where we had a, the, these weekly meetings. Sorry, not David Weekly, but <laughs> we had weekly meetings. Although he's welcome. Um, I'll let him know. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. But uh, they were weekly, and it was like, 
know, it was, it was gosh, am I going to get anything out of this? You know, and so it's very important to everybody. But for me, looking back at it at, from the agent's eyes, I'm like, I want to make sure you guys, we want to make sure you guys are getting a lot out of this. This is coming up, right? Look in your phones right now. Who do you know that you can just say, hey, uh, this is coming up. Come on and join us. It's free. We all like free. Uh, we bite all over. What the heck? You know, there's no there's no strings attached. Uh, you care about them. You care about their wealth. I, I know their company is not asking them to help them with their wealth. Um, I didn't even think about it, because that doesn't really help our bottom line here, does it? You're getting wealthy, but I tell you what, it helps our culture and it helps just the biggest reason is we're making a difference. That's what this vehicle is an opportunity to do. So, so invite people to our trainings, classes, what have you. How many people do we have going to family reunions who are not part of Keller Williams on our invite? Only three right now. So we've invited agents who aren't even with Keller Williams to come to family reunion and experience what that's going to look like. Same kind of thing. We just want them to take to, to see it, right? It's one thing for me to tell you about what this is about. It's another thing to come, be part of it, and participate, and see fantastic folks like Melissa, and Tasha, and Sarah, and Kelly, and, and, and the property folks, and everybody in here. You all bring something to the table, and if we can share that with other people, they'll want to be a part of it too. And that's what it boils down to. It's not what we say. Right? It's not, you'll never remember what people say. It's how they made you feel. And every time I've spoken to any of you, you've all made me feel great. So why in the world would we want to share that with the people we care about, know, and work with on a regular basis? Our co-op agents and inviting them to our events is exactly how we help them feel that. Because we can talk about it all we want. But until they feel it, it doesn't make a difference. Pollyanna, well, you came here, walked in the door. You kind of had an idea of what might or might not happen. How did it make you feel? How did Victoria make you feel, if I might ask? She's not here, so you can talk about her. <laughs> I had to check first, because she might have come, you know, like, no, you can't say that. How did she make you feel? Very welcome. I mean, I think, I think everyone I talked to when I, my first day here made me feel really welcome. That's awesome. John, what did you, what did you think? I loved it so much. When I went home and I told my mom all about it, she cried. She was so happy. <laughs> like, like, hands down, very welcoming. I'm so happy. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, again, extremely welcoming. And uh, my parents are getting tired of me talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> We're I can't answer that. <laughs> now, Who are the neighbors next? I want to be 100% transparent with each of you. I didn't ask them what they were going to say. And I didn't know. But I trusted in everybody who works here and everybody who's part of this business to have done what I know they do so that they would have that answer. I didn't have to worry about it. I was already confident because you guys do such a great job. And we just want to extend that to more people and help them grow in the business as well. well what makes that powerful is it's real. We're not just being nice to you because, hey, she's on board. Mm -hmm. and we actually really care about your future. And that's, that's a big difference. So what's the reward? What is the reward for doing that? Well, Jamie loves to talk about envisioning. If you haven't spent time with Jamie, Jamie will talk to you about envisioning. You gotta look forward and what does that look like in the future? What can I do with profit share? Well, one of the first things you can do is you can invest in property. I understand David Weekly is selling new homes. If you make enough in profit share, you can buy one <laughs> with the money, which will definitely help you out. Secondly, you can just think about it as, that's how I pay down my cap. Right? My cap ultimately could be free just because I use my profit share to pay it every year. That's a nice way to think about it. Again, how do I envision this in my mind? I can invest in the market. I can invest in a 401k. Okay, I can throw it all in a Roth. I can build my future by building my future by building my future. Wow, that's crazy. Because anytime you double down on something, you're going to get better results. And finally, if you're like me, you just need mad money. You got to go out and spend money foolishly, and maybe that's what you do with it. Now, I don't recommend that, but I'm telling you, I've spent 50 years doing it. So, you know, it hasn't paid off, but maybe this year. <laughs> um, market center growth. What's the reward for the market center when this happens? And if you come to the class, we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but more services. And we just, we were talking to a guy down in San Antonio, and he has a huge market. I mean, it's enormous. 
Um, actually, somebody else out there, one of the politician guy would say, it's huge, right? But they have a health coach that they brought on staff because their market center's that big, an actual just health coach. You just get to meet with them. It's not a cost, you just meet with the health coach. A massage therapist, even an acupuncturist. Now, get the point. I don't, they do get the point, and I don't want to needle you anymore about it, but we can provide, we can provide more services as we get more things and things. Um, the irony is the more agents who are here, the more profit we generate, the more profit we generate, the more profit share you get. So it's a, it builds on itself, which is amazing. We could have an improved office space. I don't know if any of you guys got the chance to go to Maple Grove's grand opening or seen the new facility they have in Roseville. But you take a look at that and you go, well, how do I get there? You don't have to move. You can build it right here. You can be part of building that future right here in this office and making it that, which you want to see because this is an office that's built by agents for agents. In more communities and activities. We do all kinds of fun stuff, but the more profit we have, the more fun stuff we can do, and that's never wrong. And most importantly, Jamie, what else can they get? Swag? No, more cowbell. Uh, more cowbell. There's one right behind you. That's not a cowbell. No. <laughs> hey, he artificially inseminates these creatures. He knows best. <laughs> I don't know what just happened here. <laughs> well, <laughs> Touch and base. We'll get through <laughs> Touch and base on this real quick. I do want to say that, that the, beauty, the thing that's most important to me is that we're being very responsible. You're not just asking someone to join a brokerage and then leave them hanging. Right? You're not they're not just going, they're not just going in your downline because you need to fill that downline fast because you need to spin all these different and then then it depends on who is on their team that they actually are serviced well here <coughs> we've got all of us okay so you invite them they're here um i think that's powerful and if using profit share you pay down your cap i just came from a 100 percent company as you guys know and we we didn't offer a, a tenth of what's here and as this market's shifting agents out there are going to need it being spoken with with a couple agents who have heard from their corporate that they're cutting more staff at these companies. They're talking about consolidating offices. You're going to hear more and more about this. Their fees are going way up. We just had a tech fee go up 50 bucks. First time in what, 30 years? I have no idea how long they've had a tech fee, but there's going to be a lot of that going on. There's going to be a lot of people who need it. Okay? There's going to be a lot of people who need you, not just so you build your profit share, but Human thing, the humane thing to do. So let's revisit this real quick before we get that awesome lunch. Let's remind, remind us of our mission to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. So we're going to have a mission award each month, and it's about profit share. Because profit share helps you build a career worth having a business worth owning, a life worth living, a handsome TL worth having in the office. Oh, I'm sorry. Experiences worth giving and legacies worth leaving. And there's going to be different ways which we measure this, but I picked a person who came in, sat down with me and just said, you know, I really want to focus on my future and I want to help a lot of agents out there that are going to need us. And that person came up with a list full of, of agents even a couple of scripts that I should, conversations that I should use. And that person is. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> we didn't know what the first award should be. <laughs> so we just figured, you know what? We love to play a role and help oh, light the flame of your freedom. Oh. <laughs> Every time you smell this, it's the aroma of So with that, I want to thank everybody for coming. Again, I can't stress enough how valuable and how important it is to me to share this time with all of you. Um, and what you all bring to the table uh, every day, every time to your clients, 
to your peers, to the people in your families around you, to the people that matter, brings me such joy. And to be part of that is the best part of my job every day, all the time. So thank you again for coming. Enjoy lunch brought by our fantastic friend from David Legley Homes. And let's go out there and have fun. For those of you who are in family, we're going to family reunion. We're literally going to just shift gears, go grab lunch. We're going to talk about family reunion. You're welcome to be in the room um, if you're not. But we're going to get through that as quick as we can because we know you've got things to do.